Hi, I'm James Landau. Those of you who follow my YouTube channel know that I write songs. Songs from the bittersweet generation, songs about Trump and Bush, songs that came to me in dreams. But did you know that I struggle every day with a rare disorder? Imagine if you could taste onions, chocolate, or manicotti just by reading an article or listening to a conversation. Such is the everyday reality for me. With my tasting of words and subsequent need to get them out of my system, life is a daily struggle against things I hear and see. When I hear or read words or look at objects, I get the sensation that I'm swallowing the word or object. Additionally, different words and objects have different tastes. The word Trump tastes like sautéed mushrooms. The word child tastes like chocolate brownie. The name Tiffany tastes like lemon meringue pie. I am a person to whom words do more than convey semantic meanings. To most people, tale is just a word for a story. But to me, it conjures up the taste of lasagna, the pasta in lasagna with a light sauce on it. When I look at black electronics, I taste dark chocolate. And when I look at my sunglasses, I taste lemon drops. At the home where I grew up, there was a wall that looked like Triscuits, and it tasted of Triscuit to me. Sometimes I might taste a sound without tasting the whole word. I taste grapes when I hear the P sound, and it's not part of a longer word that has its own taste. While words with the letter F taste like bread. V tastes like stringy meat the beef and pot roast, perhaps, while W tastes like water, L tastes like cheese. So that's all fair and good, but there are also the gross words. Words like the M word. It begins with M and rhymes with dress, and it means something that needs to be cleaned up, as in, your room is a, uh, it tastes like oatmeal. And the I word, it begins with I and rhymes with nice dream and refers to a frozen dessert made with milk and sugar that comes in flavors like chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. The I word tastes like the I word. Or the SC word, it begins with SC and rhymes with boot and it's followed by over and you tell people to do it when they're sitting in the wrong seat. It tastes like carrot. The most unpleasant taste of all is the C word. It begins with C and rhymes with beauty, and it means a cute person, which tastes like phlegm. Every time I hear or read it, I get the sensation of having just swallowed phlegm. I feel as if I have a cold in my nose with sneezing. I can actually feel the phlegm in my stomach and intestines, even if I don't have any phlegm in my mouth, sinus, and nose. I can't stand having these words inside me, and when I hear or read them, I have to do something I call purging. A rush to the nearest restroom, then unzip my pants and scrape my nails across my groin as I swirl the word around and around. I'll chant a vaccinated form of the word, just as a vaccine is a weakened variation on a virus that helps your body fight the real virus. I'll say a weakened form of the word to get the real word out of my body. If someone said the M word, for instance, I'll chant Madales, Madales. If someone said the I word, I'll chant Adelice Cradleen. And if someone told me or someone else to do the SC word over, I'll chant Scatalute over. Once I'm done, I'll run my nails over my abdomen and chest, over my throat, and then the word will come out of my mouth. It's like vomiting up the word. 
There are a number of objects that make me purge too. Eyeword cones, plastic silverware, spiders, Spider-Man, Winnie the Pooh, pajamdras. Yes, pajamdras, as in sleepwear. I have to say the word with an epithetic dr, because even the word for it makes me purge. This is a form of synesthesia, which is what neurologists call it when your senses mix together. Some people with synesthesia, synesthetes, see the letter N as brown and the letter S as red. Other people with synesthesia hear a D minor and see the note as dark blue. Yet other synesthetes have a number line in their head that pictures the numbers as moving in a certain direction. From 1 to 2 to 3 up until 100, the numbers will go up and up. And then once you reach 100, the number line will start moving to the right. Then there's lexical gustatory synesthesia, wherein people taste words. Although it's believed that one out of every 23 people has some sort of synesthesia, only one in 500 people are believed to be word tasters. This synesthesia is combined with OCD, the compulsion to purge the word or object out, accompanied by elaborate rituals. This combination of OCD and lexical gustatory synesthesia is what I call logosthesia, or word tasting. It comes from the Greek roots logos, meaning word, and esthesis, meaning sensation. Now, when I hear or read one of these terrible words, like the SC word, it's as if it's inside of me, slumbering in my intestines and attracting intestinal slime. To hear or read a word is to take it in. I can never read an article without feeling as if I'm taking a drink of that article's waters, feasting on a repast of bread, beef stew, and almond roca from the article. The same with listening to conversation. When I first hear or read a purge word or an object like plastic silverware, I'll have an immediate verbal reaction. If I hear the M word, for instance, or the K and E words, keep an on, or if I see Spider-Man or Winnie the Pooh, I'll shout, ew. If someone says the I word or the T word, the word that begins with T and rhymes with pasty and means delicious, I'll shout, blech. If someone says the SC word or the G word, begins with a G and rhymes with dacha, and it's an elision of the words got and you, I'll growl, Err. If someone says the C word or the TW word, begins with TW and rhymes with slinky and refers to a hostess snack, I'll shout, Ech. And then there's the WH word. It begins with WH and rhymes with hoops. And it's an interjection, people say, when they make a mistake. That word tastes like whipped cream, and it makes me so angry that I slam my forehead, a la Homer Simpson, and shout, Doe! Then, as soon as I can get to a restroom or my bedroom, I embark on the purging. A lot of words are just a simple scrape at the groin, accompanied by me chanting the vaccinated form of the words. While I make the thrusts over my intestines, I want to taste the word coming up. I know if I'm doing it right because I can really taste it and feel an oily moving up when it makes the word move out of me. When I hear the T word, however, I chant some tadalastes, then some adalicecratilines. The T word became a purge word because there was an anthropomorphic I word cone on the adventures of Pete and Pete named Mr. T word. I hate anthropomorphic food 
and that cone character elicited such a reaction that the T word and the I word shall be forever linked together for me. Some words, such as the short form of bicycle, by short form, I mean like hippo is the short form of hippopotamus, or fridge is the short form of refrigerator, makes me pick my navel instead. When I was in the second grade, my class had a unit on bicycle safety and did a bicycle rodeo, and I heard the short form of bicycle, yes, the word that rhymes with like a lot. It started getting caught in my navel. Now, whenever I hear or read that word, I feel as if I have a jagged piece of metal caught in my navel, and I have to pick it out with my nails. A word can have a taste I enjoy and still be a purge word. The W word, for instance, begins with W and rhymes with Gary and means leery or circumspect. Tastes of rotisserie chicken, which is a taste I love, but it still makes me uncomfortable to have that sensation inside of me. The D word begins with DR and rhymes with slip. It's something Iward Cones and Carl's Jr. Burgers do. Tastes like whatever food is doing the D word. When talking about raindrops or a faucet doing the D word, it tastes like melting ice. A word's taste can also differ with pronunciation. In Central Costa, Contra, Contra Costa County, where I grew up, Everybody pronounced the word pajamdras, trying with dramas, with the middle A is in water. I would always taste the tomato sauce that people put on pizzas. Then I moved out to West Contra Costa, and people pronounced it pajamdras, with the middle A is in hammer. I got a potatoey taste from hearing the word. Often, I will have an associated taste for a word without even realizing I taste it. For instance, I, until I was 27, I didn't realize that doodle tasted like macaroni to me. It probably tastes like macaroni because Yankee Doodle stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Now you may be asking, are there any words I particularly enjoy because of the taste? The answer is yes. The word summer, for instance, tastes like a citrusy yogurt, and I love it. My favorite word taste is franchise, with its fried chicken taste. And of course, most food words taste like the food to which they refer. If I learned the word as a child, years before tasting the food or beverage, though, the word tastes what I imagined the food or drink would taste like. The word beer tastes like root beer, and the word coffee tastes like hot chocolate. As you can imagine, having to avoid hearing and reading the words and seeing the objects makes my life difficult. I don't like watching TV or going to the movies, and the commercials are the worst part. Like the liver of the blowfish, commercials are full of vile words like the I word, the T word, the WH word, the M word, and cleaning agent commercials, and the SH word rhymes with slipping and means sending via cargo, as in free SH wording or SH wording and handling. I have a white cell machine in my room to drown out the purge word from TV and conversations in other rooms in my house. I also used to suffer while surfing the internet and had to copy and paste a lot of posts from the net into Notepad and use find and replace on them. Now I have a grease monkey filter that replaces the offending words. My particular filter was coded by one Alex Cobian, a game inventor and the creator of the pirate game Booty. I enjoy listening to music, though, 
because at least on the radio stations I enjoy, I already know most of the songs and remember where the purge words are coming up. And when I have to plug my ears, I couldn't live without music. In fact, I take my headphones and iPod classic with me when I'm out and about, especially when I'm in a car or a van and the radio is playing on a station I don't like to drown out all those purge words. I don't like cramming into vans, though, because people often tell others to do the SC word over. I put a sleep mask on over my eyes when I'm on the road to avoid seeing signs with gross words or pictures, so I'm used to wearing masks and don't feel uncomfortable with my face mask on during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm also good at washing my hands. I do not always hear other people's words clearly, and sometimes it is not clear whether a word another person just said is a purge word or another word that sounds like it. What sounds like the M word, for instance, could really be miss, must, nest, next, mass, or Melissa. What sounds like the SC word could be school, scoop, screwed, or excuse me. And sometimes, what, what's, looks, or whoa, sounds like the WH word. If I can't figure out what the word is, I have to purge just to be on the safe side. And so I don't do extra purging work that I didn't need to do. I ask the person who said it what he or she said. I ask other people, did I hear the I word or whatever a lot? And that can get annoying. Another big problem for me is all the object triggers. To avoid coming across things that make me purge, such as spiders and cobwebs around my parents' house, or plastic silverware in restaurants, or Winnie the Pooh and Spider-Man garbage in stores, I have to close my eyes, or at the very least cut my hand in front of my eyes, so I only see the aisles in front of me. It makes it hard for me to make my way around a store when I can't allow myself to look around. And sometimes I even bump into shelves. Sometimes I've even bumped into people closing or cupping my eyes. Often I'll have my eyes closed while talking to someone if there's a purge object in the background or vicinity, or if he or she is wearing pajama dress or something with a picture I don't like. I wear these sunglasses all the time because I don't want my interlocutor to know I have my eyes closed when I'm talking with him or her. But there's got to be something to be said for an awesome pair of beatnik shades, right? I can't work at a 7-Eleven because I'd see the I word, if only when someone brought it up to my checkout and I'd hear people saying purge words every now and then. The time spent purging would decrease productivity, and the boss wouldn't be too happy with the fact that I was purging instead of working. I'd have to wash my hands all the time too, and with all that purging, I'd spend too much of my time at my job washing my hands to work. I am also unable to drive due to my logosthesia. Having the car radio on while driving is out of the question. Once that radio gets onto a commercial break, all hell would break loose. And to avoid seeing eyeward parlors with a cone picture on their outsides or seeing Carl's Jr., I would have to close my eyes while driving and I couldn't drive at all then. One side effect of my logosthesia is that I spit a lot. The way my logosthesia works, once I hear a purge word, I can't swallow until I have purged off all the words and objects I need to. As a result, I've learned to deprogram my body's autonomic swallowing, often waiting a long time to swallow. The saliva builds up in my mouth and after a prolonged period of time, I have to spit, either outside, or in the sink, or in the toilet, or in my own garbage bag-lined wastebasket. 
Because of this delayed swallowing, I often have to go a long time without eating or drinking. Even taking my pills is sometimes delayed. I'll go hours without swallowing anything, and then I'll feast like a king for 20 minutes. Having an empty stomach also makes me burp a lot. You're probably asking, so James, when did this all start? Have you been purging your whole life? Well, I got tastes and words and objects for as long as I can remember, but the purging started when I was six years old. I was in kindergarten. And the class was learning the song, I know an old lady who swallowed a fly. I was terrified by the song and was even malingering to avoid going to school and hearing it. However, I was so embarrassed by being frightened by the song that telling other people what the song was would only have made things worse. I was trapped. When the old lady swallowed the spider and the goat, I started scraping my nails over my throat every time I heard or read the word spider or goat. More words were soon added to my list of purge words. From age six to age eight, the purging ritual went lower and lower down my body until it went all the way down to my groin, the lowest unbifurcated point on my body. I had a sensation that the words were inside my intestines, or sometimes my navel. Although most content words in English have some taste or another, words only became purge words if they meant something gross, or sounded like other words that were purge words, or gave me a very strong stuck-in-the-body sensation, or had a very strong taste or an unpleasant taste like the C word tasting like phlegm, or had grown out of repeated bad encounters with someone habitually using the word. There was the S C word, for instance. This kvetchy girl in my third grade class was always yelling at me to S C word, or the word pardon, which is only a purge word in the sense of I didn't hear what you said. I spent my early years with lingual apraxia, and it was frustrating to have to repeat myself over and over again. By the time I was 20, every other thing I said to my father resulted in a pardon. Then at 21, I had a bio instructor at my junior college with a habit of using the word, and an art instructor who made pardon her word of choice when she didn't hear what a student said, and well, it became a purge word. I often go into rooms alone, so I have a place to purge where no one will see that I am purging. I used to purge in public, but eventually the rituals got so deep into my groin I had to unbutton my pants, and I couldn't do it in public anymore. I'm not prudish about other people seeing me, but I'm afraid that other people might tell me my behavior is inappropriate or socially unacceptable if they see me purging, so I need to hide my purging to save my fragile soul. Even before I started unbuttoning my pants, Many of my high school teachers in Moraga, California, they are generally a social conformist lot, took serious issue with me purging. And I hated it when they referred to it as, quote, putting your hands in your pants, end quote. An exonerous name for purging. That was how they saw it. The uptightness of my Boomer and Joneser teachers contrasted with the tolerance of my early wave millennial classmates, set me down a path of seriously thinking about generational differences. This being on the wrong side against public purging has engendered a lifelong hatred of social conventions, as you can sense if you watch my play The Bittersweet Generation, it has also made me into a more tolerant, socially liberal person. 
It got me asking questions like, why can't guys wear their hair long? Or why can't people walk around naked in public? Of course, I'm also bisexual, Jewish, millennial, highly emotional, and dislike showering. So it was only natural for me. Now I grow my hair long, have a beard, and write rock songs. When I went to school, my classmates figure out some of the words that I couldn't stand the D word. I freaked out when people talked about their fruit during the D word. Some students would chant the D word loudly over and over again, sending me for a lot of purging. While others would say, WH word, juicy tangerines. Words came and went over the years. The last new word to be added to my roster of purge words was the A of the P words. The A word is all, the O word is over, and the P word is place. This phrase was added when I was 21. I no longer add new words or objects to my blacklist. Logosthesia is OCD combined with lexical gustatory synesthesia. I call logosthesia a lichen disorder. A lichen consists of a fungus and an alga combined to make another organism in its own right. Lichen disorders consist of two other conditions working synergistically to make a composite disorder all to its own. Another example of a lichen disorder would be schizoaffective disorder, which occurs when someone has both schizophrenia and a mood disorder. Although I was diagnosed with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder when I was nine and think, yes, that's how it is when I read the descriptions of how OCD works. I went to see the OCD specialist, Dr. Pat Patricia Zurita Onia, or Dr. Z, a few years ago to see if I could be treated with behavioral therapy. And she told me the symptoms I described to her did not sound like OCD because I had compulsions, but not the accompanying obsessive chains of thought of the I'm going to be doomed because this will happen variety. Dr. Z says I probably have something called thought disorder instead. My former psychiatrist, Dr. Nanda, says I have atypical OCD. So maybe I have OCD as part of my logosthesia, or maybe I just have logosthesia. But there's no doubt about it, I have compulsions. My compulsions are just based on aesthetic feelings rather than the usual worry and fear. Now, I'd like to talk about some misconceptions people often have about my logosthesia. The first misconception people often have is that I am masturbating. Although my hands are at my groin most of the time when I purge, I am not actually touching the shaft of my penis nor any other part of my body that will make me feel aroused. I'm just scraping at my groin because that's where I feel the purge word is. Purging doesn't give me pleasure. In fact, some of it is very painful, but it's necessary and I feel better afterwards. It's like swallowing something bad and having to make yourself vomit it back up. The second misconception comes from people who don't know me very well. They hear me talking about the T word or the I word and think the words that make me purge are swear words or curse words. You can say all the dirty words you want. The words that make me purge are ordinary words that don't bother most people. And in fact, you'd likely be unable to guess my purge words if I didn't give you the clues. The third misconception comes from people who see me plugging my ears when I think I'm about to hear a purge word, or closing or cupping my eyes and looking down. 
They're used to people on the autistic spectrum and other people with developmental disabilities who are bothered by bright lights and loud noise, and they think that I have sensory integration disorder. But those people are bothered by general brightness. They are not bothered by specific objects. Those people are bothered by general loudness. They are not bothered by specific words. Those things don't bother me at all. In fact, I love to hear people scream, and I like my Nirvana loud. I remember this one time when I was giving a speech at the flagship office for my disabled program in Hayward. The director, Stan Schmidt, saw me covering my hands over my eyes to avoid seeing plastic silverware and arachnid life and asked the person who was with me, is the light too bright for him? And I had to explain to Mr. Schmidt that bright lights don't bother me. The fourth misconception I sometimes get is people thinking I'm shy. Mr. Ken Powell, the old director of my disabled program, thought I was shy because he'd see me going into the restroom for long periods of time or locking myself alone in rooms where actually it was, you guessed it, purging. I've never been a shy person in fact, I don't even understand what it is that people who are shy are so afraid of. I don't even get stage fright. When I take a Myers-Briggs test, I score ENFP, which stands for Extroverted Intuitive Feeling and Perceiving. I never get tired from socializing. After I attended my high school reunion, I had a hard time sleeping that night. The only time I need to be alone is when I'm purging. That disabled program I used to attend before the pandemic started had lots of things that mean you need to get away so I didn't have to do too much purging. They had things like Halloween parties. I hate Halloween. With Halloween decorations and tablecloths and plates with spiders and cobwebs and skeletons black and tables stocked with cake and the eye word and plastic silverware enough to send me into purging overload. The fifth misconception is that I like to purge. People will hear me bombarding them with questions. Did I hear the I word? Was that the WH word? Did he say the G word? Even when it turns out that no purge word was said, it all seemed to them as if I'm jumping on a chance to engage in a purging ritual. In fact, I don't like to purge. It's unpleasant but necessary. It's just that if I can't figure out whether I really hit a purge word or not, I have to purge just to be on the safe side. And although most people tend to hear what they want to hear, you have to understand that I'm not a normal person. I have just the opposite problem. I tend to hear what I'm afraid of hearing. The final misconception is that I'm nosy. There was this man at my old program a Mien immigrant who had trouble with English, and he would accuse me of being nosy because I would frequently ask others about what they said, even when the sentence wasn't directed at me. No, I'm not nosy. I couldn't care less about the content of what you said, about your dirt, about your juice, about your gossip. I just need to find out if that one particular purge word I thought I heard was said. So that's it for the misconceptions. If I may get philosophical for a moment, I'd like to talk about being unique. People with schizophrenia, with Asperger's, with social anxiety disorder, with ADD, with conduct disorder, they're a dime a dozen. But I've never heard of anyone else having logosthesia. 
In fact, I had to be the one to invent the word, since there previously existed no term that named the condition of had tasting words and having to purge them off. I was 26 when I noticed that I tasted words and coined the word logosthesia, and since then, I've been on a quest to find other logosthetes, but I've never found another person like me. I joined Sean Day's synesthesia mailing list, and I found one woman, Elizabeth Wendler, who also has both synesthesia and OCD. She corresponded with me via email, and even quoted my post in an academic article she wrote. The first time the word logosthesia appeared in a dead tree publication was in her 2017 article, Leakings, Drafts, and Magical Thinking in the Journal of Transpersonal Psychology in Issue 2, Volume 49. Elizabeth describes me as a creative individual and also believes I'm what they call a highly sensitive person. I say she's right on the money with that one. I don't know for sure, but I, there is the possibility that I am the only person among 8 billion who has logosthesia. While this would make me veritably unique, it also makes me feel lonely. Even though I have many close friends whom I love to death, there is still an unfulfilled desire to meet another person who tastes words and objects and purges off the bad ones. And I worry that the answer to that Fermian question, am I alone in the universe, may in fact be yes. So if you see me out and about, no, I'm not bothered by bright lights or loud noises, so please don't ask. And if you hear me chanting strange words in a restroom stall, no, I'm not masturbating, nor trying to make advances to other people in the restrooms. Having logosthesia has brought a lot of pain and suffering to my life. I've sometimes purged for 10 hours on end. It's also made me feel alone in this world, but it has given me the enviable superpower of tasting words, made me creative, driven me to question society, and shown me who my real friends are. Josh Billings once said that life consists not in holding good cards, but in playing those you hold well. Life has dealt me the life script of the Logesthet, and I wouldn't trade it for any other life. If you liked this video, tell other people about it. And as always, I'm looking for more subscribers. I'm James Landau. You're watching my YouTube channel, Save Graduation.